conference debate on the interim report of Enbridge Line 5 is vitally important and matters to Canadians. Canada is on the precipice of a national energy security emergency, and the deadline is this Wednesday, May 12th. A critical piece of Canada's energy infrastructure is set to be shut down, and Canada simply doesn't have the luxury of time. On the 13th of November 2020, the state of Michigan revoked the easement that allows the Enbridge Line 5 pipeline to travel underwater through the Straits of the Mackinac between Lake Michigan and Lake Huron. Unless reversed, this decision requires Enbridge to cease operations of this section of the line by this Wednesday. Any disruption to Line 5 will be devastating for Canada's energy security and economic well-being. Enbridge Line 5 carries up to 540,000 barrels a day of petroleum products, including light crude oil and natural gas liquids from Alberta and Saskatchewan. It supplies over 53% of Ontario's crude oil and 66% of Quebec's. Line 5 provides an estimated 4,900 direct jobs and up to 23,000 indirect jobs in the supported industries. It supplies significant portions of diesel fuel, propane for Canada's east, and much of the jet fuel that supports Pearson Airport. Line 5 generates over $65 billion of direct and $28 billion of indirect revenue in annual trade. Closure of the section of the pipeline under the Straits of Mackinac would require 2,000 tanker trucks or 800 rail cars a day to keep pace with the demand. Estimates indicate there would not be enough surplus truckload rail car capacity to support this increase. Furthermore, a rise in the volume of trucks on Canada's roads and at the border would dramatically increase congestion, vehicle emissions, and the risk of serious traffic accidents. This should be a wake-up call for Canada, not only because of the short-term challenges, but for the long-term ones as well. Citizens in Ontario, Quebec, and the Maritime Provinces heat their homes, support their families, keep planes and trains moving and crops growing because of Western Canadian oil and gas that travels to Eastern Canada, among others, through Line 5. The decision to shut down a portion of the pipeline happens this Wednesday. And in the short term, what is the plan B if, there were, if Canada is unable to get this decision reversed? Where will the additional trucks come from? or the rail cars when we already have a shortage of ability to use rail and get supplies to market? How will the jobs be replaced? Tens of thousands of jobs. And what will this shutdown do to the price of oil, gas, and propane? How will aircraft at Pearson Airport get back in the air? Even more importantly, how will this affect our economic recovery after COVID at a time when lives and livelihoods have already been so drastically disrupted during the pandemic? But even more disconcerting is the long-term implications. A unilateral decision made outside of a Canadian jurisdiction threatens the very health and security of millions of Canadians. Even if it weren't a U.S. political decision, but instead a natural disaster or equipment failure that threatened the delivery con continuity of this pipeline, Canada's overwhelming dependence on this one infrastructure asset is simply too great. Canada must have an alternative, preferably one that transits from east to west entirely within Canada. COVID-19 has made every Canadian increasingly aware of the risk of dependence on other countries for critical health, safety, and security supplies. As a trading nation, being part of a global supply chain is central to Canada's economic prosperity. However, this must be balanced with domestic self-sufficiency for critical items that Canadians can't live without. Items like PPE, vaccines, and critical drug supplies but with the threat to Enbridge Line 5, Canada's self-sufficiency should also include the supply of oil, gas, and propane that supports the agriculture that feeds us and the energy that keeps us warm. 
Climate change is real. And as Canadians, we must do our part to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and contribute to sound environmental stewardship. Canadian oil and gas meets the highest environment regulations and standards in the world. Other countries look to Canada to achieve a higher standard in environmentally responsible resource production. If all of the oil and gas producing nations around the world adopted Canadian standards, the worldwide greenhouse gas emissions would be reduced by a substantial 25%. Canadians can be proud of the current standards that have been achieved and the research that is underway to further push the boundaries of greenhouse gas reductions. Despite being the world's sixth largest oil producing nation, Canadians get 44% of their supply from foreign producers rather than domestic supply. Increased use of Canada's domestic oil and gas supply would reduce both Canada's energy vulnerability and the nation's total greenhouse gas emissions. So the future of Line 5 is in the hands of the US courts and with it, Canada's fortunes. And that's why this report by the Canada-US Economic Relations Special Committee is so important, as are the critical recommendations. And I'd like to share with you four of the seven recommendations that I think are drastically worthy of note. The first is that this Prime Minister of Canada and his ministers pursue frequent and direct dialogue on the issue of Line 5 with the US President in an attempt to resolve the dispute diplomatically as soon as possible. We have not seen this. It must happen. We don't have the luxury of time and we need a sense of urgency. We need the Prime Minister to take this matter up with the President of the United States. Secondly, we need to be able to put forward Canada's legal perspective. And based on the information currently available to the special committee, we recommended that a, an amicus curiae brief, if a negotiated or immediate settlement permitting the continued operation of Line 5 is not reached between Enbridge and the state of Michigan prior to the date where such briefs must be filed. And this brief would set out Canada's legal position with respect to the operation of pipelines that cross international boundaries, including but not limited to advising the court of any rights set out in the bilateral or multilateral treaties or agreements, including the one that protects this pipeline, which is the 1977 agreement between the government of Canada and the government of the United States concerning the transit of pipelines. Thirdly, and this is where we start looking to what if what's our plan B if the decision is not reversed. The government of Canada work with industry to develop contingency plans designed to ensure that Canadian oil and gas products will continue to be delivered in a timely fashion to the Canadian refineries and industries that rely on line five pipeline in case an interruption should occur. Obviously, we don't want an interruption. Obviously, we want this decision to be reversed. But we can't just say it's going to happen. We have to have an urgent plan B. And lastly, and most importantly, that in light of the external threat posed to Line 5's continued operation, that the Government of Canada evaluate other possible vulnerabilities to Canada's critical energy infrastructure and supply chains and develop contingency plans to ensure that our interests are protected in those in the event of disruptions there. Canada's energy security, economic recovery and commitment to climate change requires an oil and gas pipeline that connects west to east entirely within Canada. It's the right thing for Canada and it's the right thing for the contribution that Canada makes as global citizens to the world. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Uh, question comment, uh, and comments. The Honourable Member for Drummond. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and I'd like to thank my colleague for her speech. Mr. Speaker, in all likelihood, and according to what the experts are saying, there's very little likelihood that there's anything to worry about. If Line 5 is closed down 
on May 12th. In fact, the governor of Michigan, maybe she's threatening Enbridge, she's brandishing this threat to force Enbridge to renovate the line, uh, but uh, the, the pipeline is worrisome because of how old it is. So what does my colleague have to say to this, this idea that there's nothing to fear, that it's really just a matter of safety that uh, is of concern here? The Honourable Member for Aurora Oak Ridge's Mission Hill. Well, I thank the, my honourable co colleague for a very important question because the fact is that never say never. The governor of Michigan has said that she is absolutely committed to shutting this down. Not to mention, this is not something new. The discussion started officially in November of last year, but this narrative and this trend towards shutting it down has been going on since 2015, and Canada perhaps hasn't taken it as seriously as we needed to. So. That I don't believe is going to go away, which is why at the same time, even if we are able to reverse a decision and have this pipeline continue, we still need to have uh, a plan B and some mechanism to protect Canada's in energy security going forward. Questions and comments? The Honourable Member for Nanaimo, Lady Smith. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and uh, I'm pleased to ask a question in this important debate. Um, back when the Kalamazoo spill hap happened, 840,000 litres into the Kalamazoo River in Michigan, environmentalists were already flagging the problem with Line 5 crossing the Mackinac Strait. So I saw a video of that pipeline, underwater video, flagging this issue way back then. And I'm wondering why uh, the, the Harper Conservative government didn't do anything about this and why we've waited so long uh, when we knew that this could be a potential problem. We need to hold companies like Enbridge responsible for their, their infrastructure, especially when we are reliant on that infrastructure for our economy. And I would like to ask the honourable member whether she thinks that we should have stronger regulations on these pipeline companies uh, to make sure that they... The honourable member for Aurora Oak Ridges, Richmond Hill. I think the important question is, what are we as Canadians going to do today? This should be a wake-up call for us. We have the highest environmental standards in the world, and we hold our companies to a very high standard. And if the rest of the world were to meet our standard, greenhouse gases would be reduced by a whopping 25%. So the question is not how we got here, but what are we going to do to protect the environment, energy security, and Canada's own self-sufficiency so we're not vulnerable to decisions made in other jurisdictions. Questions and comments? The Honourable Member for...